Hey everyone, and welcome to another time of Bible study here at Bangham Heights Baptist Church in Cookville, Tennessee. I'm so glad that you've taken the time to tune in and to watch uh, and listen to uh, this message uh, out of First Peter. If you have a copy of God's Word, I want you to go ahead and turn over to First Peter chapter 4. And we've been walking through uh, basically verse by verse, uh, doing a study of First Peter, and then we got to verses 12 through 16 and turned this really into a little uh, mini uh, sub-series inside of the First Peter series uh, of why Christians suffer. And so uh, today, uh, my goal is to kind of wrap up this little sub-series by looking at one other verse, but I want to encourage you to go back and uh, watch parts one, two, and three or share those with somebody who uh, may, uh, be, may be experiencing a time of suffering in their life. And uh, now, with that said, though, I want to encourage you to tune in uh, with us this coming Sunday, May the 3rd. The, uh, we're in a series out of Psalm 119, and uh, we're, in, uh, we're getting to a section here that we're going to look at this Sunday, which lines right up with what we're talking about, what we've been talking about here in 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 through 16, and why Christians suffer. The psalmist in Psalm 119 uh, refers to the affliction in his life. And so uh, I want to encourage you to uh, tune into that because it's going to line right up with what we've been talking about here. Now, uh, real quickly, what I want to do, and again, the videos are on YouTube and this playlist of why Christians suffer, but I want to recap. Uh, part one is the reality of suffering, uh, and, and the reality is uh, we're going to suffer. Even as a Christian, there is going to be suffering in our life. There's common suffering. There's carnal suffering. Carnal suffering is when you make a, a bad decision, you, a bad choice, uh, a sinful deed or a sinful action, you uh, something to uh, of the flesh. And so that carnal suffering, we understand. It's the Christian suffering, though, that the Christian has a hard time understanding is why there is so much suffering in our life even as a Christian. So part one's uh, an explanation as to the reality of suffering, and that's more about uh, verse 12 in chapter 4. Now, then we looked in part two at the reason for suffering, and uh, we listed many reasons. Uh, there are many reasons for suffering in the Christian life, but really we just kind of go to verse 16 and he says in verse 16 that if you suffer as a Christian, not to be ashamed, but to glorify God in this matter, ultimately, the reason for suffering in the life of a Christian is still to bring glory and honor to Jesus Christ. And then in part three, we looked at the reaction to suffering. And, and so the reaction is uh, basically this, will you rejoice or will you rebel? Sometimes when there is suffering that comes into our life, we rebel against God. Uh, but Peter says the proper reaction, and we find it in verse 13, where he says that we are to rejoice. Rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings. And so uh, that's the proper reaction to the suffering in our life is to rejoice and to praise God. Uh, and so I would encourage you to go back and, and look at part three again. Now, along that lines, I, I read something just this week, which would go with part three, but I'm going to say it now here. OK, the only way we can rejoice in our suffering with Christ is is if there is genuine love for him in our heart. Now, I want you to ponder upon that for just a minute. Do you have that genuine love for God in your heart? Jesus said the greatest commandment is to do what? Love the Lord thy God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and then to love your neighbor as yourself, the second greatest commandment. If you truly have a genuine love for God, then I believe there can be the rejoicing uh, even in the midst of 
the suffering that you are enduring. And so uh, we've looked at the reality, the reason, the reaction. So now here in part four, we're going to focus on this, our reliance in suffering. Our reliance, who do we rely on during our time of suffering? Well, we rely on none other than our faithful God. And so we need to understand that even in the midst of our suffering, we must rely on God. Now, we're going to skip verses 17 and 18. I'm going to come back to those next week as we just continue to go through uh, 1 Peter in this series. But I'm going to go to, uh, I'm going to skip ahead to verse 19. So go to verse 19, if you would, and look at what it says here. Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. Uh, now, I want to read this verse. I want to read this verse from a different translation. This is not a translation that I, I normally read. Uh, most of the time, uh, as you notice here, I read New King James. I do read uh, the ESV some, uh, every now and then the NIV, the NET. But in my preparation for this, I thought... I want to read this in a, another translation. I'm not saying that I, I completely agree with this, but it's called the Easy English Version. So listen to how the Easy English Version puts verse 19. So then, people may cause you trouble and pain. Now, you may agree with that, all right? There are people that are causing me trouble and pain. Listen to what it says. People may cause you trouble and pain because God chooses that. But you should continue to believe God who made you. God always does what he has promised. So continue to believe that he will be good to you and continue to do what is good. Now, I may read that again at the end, but my goal for today, uh, for just a few minutes, is to really kind of break down verse 19 and how we need to look to God, our faithful creator, as our reliance during our time of suffering. If you go back and if you really study all five uh, chapters here in this letter, every chapter in this letter, Peter gives counsel and comfort to the Christian, or, or in other words, the sufferer. He is writing to new believers, believers that have been dispersed, that have been scattered into different regions because of persecution. And, and so suffering is kind of the, the main theme of this whole letter. And here's basically what Peter is telling you and I today, that if we will embrace God, if we will embrace Christianity, then we will kind of expose ourselves to persecution that in other words, if we truly embrace the word of God and we embrace Christ and we live for Christ and we live according to, the, to his word, then troubles and trials and then there, there will be persecution and there will be suffering for his name. Remember, that's what he said back in verse 16, that if you bear the name of Christ, then you are suffering for his name. And so look in verse 19, if you would. And I want to kind of just briefly uh, break this down. Look, he said, look at what he says there. Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God, according to the will of God. Now, you may have never thought about this. I, I've never really thought about this. How part of God's will for our life includes the suffering. And it does. And so that is part of God's will or God's plan according to the will of God that we will suffer. There will be persecution. There will be troubles and trials that will come our way, suffering because we bear or we embrace Christianity and we embrace the name of Christ. And so here's what he's saying in verse 19 then, that when suffering comes our way, then it ought to motivate us. As God's people, it should motivate us 
to a greater uh, trust, a, a greater reliance, a, a greater faithfulness, and to a reliance upon God, because I love how he puts it in verse 19, the very last part there. Look at how he describes God, our faithful creator. That's who God is. That God is, first of all, faithful, and he is our creator, but he puts those two together and he says, God is your faithful creator. And we'll talk more about that in just a minute. But now look at what he says here in verse 19. Let those who suffer according to the will of God, now look at what he says, commit their souls to him. Commit your soul to him. To him, in the King James Version, uh, it, it reads like this, commit the keeping of their souls. Now, that word commit can actually be translated in trust. Uh, and, and that's here's what it simply means. It means that you are entrusting not your body, but you are entrusting your soul to him. To who? To the faithful creator. This phrase here of commit their souls or commit the keeping of their souls, uh, it, it's a banking term. And we're familiar with banks. And so here's what it means. It's a banking term that means to deposit for safekeeping. You understand what he's saying there then? That you are entrusting, you are committing your soul, we might say that we're committing our life, our being, but not necessarily our body. Our body will return to the dust, to the clay, but I am committing my soul. I'm committing my life. I'm saying, God, I'm putting my soul into your hands for safekeeping and, and for him to guard. So listen to what I'm about to say. No matter what we may face in this life, we must rely on our Father, our faithful Creator. Now, I want to say that again, and I would encourage you that if you take notes to pause the video and to write this down, okay? No matter what you may face in this life, you must rely on God, your faithful Creator. Now, I know that's easier said than done. But this is simply what I'm trying to get across to you here in part four of this series of why Christians suffer. We understand the reality of suffering. We understand the reason for suffering and our reaction to suffering. And so now we look at this and our reliance has to be in our faithful creator. Again, listen, what I'm about to say we need to stop trying to fix ourselves. You can't fix yourself. And so uh, you can't save yourself. And so uh, what I'm saying is this, it's not a, it's not a self-reliance, but it's a savior reliance. I'm not relying on self. I'm not trusting in self during my suffering, but I am trusting and I am relying in my savior, Jesus Christ. I am committing my soul to him. I am looking to the one who is all powerful and I am trusting in him. Now, that doesn't mean that God is, uh, as the faithful creator, it doesn't mean that he is going to automatically remove that suffering from my life. It simply means that he will see me through the suffering. He'll be right there with me along the way. Now, uh, look at what it says in verse 19. Commit the keeping of your soul, commit your soul to him in doing good. I'm not going to read the verse, but over in back in chapter two, verse 20, he talks about this in doing good. It, it, sometimes it, it doesn't make sense to us that even though we're out there doing those good deeds or those good works. Now, I'm not saying that you're saved by those good works because you're not. The Bible says you are saved by grace through faith and not of your works, lest any man should boast. But we do those good deeds and even though we're doing the good works and the good deeds, there is suffering that still comes our way. And so this is the this is difficult and this is hard for the Christian to understand and for us to wrap our heads around. But remember, though, the reason for that suffering 
is to bring glory and honor to the name of Jesus Christ. And so when you uh, when your reaction is to rejoice even in the midst of your suffering, and that suffering is even because you're doing good, good deeds or good works, then there again, who gets all the glory? God does. And that's what it's about, that God gets all the glory, even in our suffering and when we're doing those good uh, good deeds or good works in our suffering. So listen, maybe you're going through a hard time. Maybe you're, you're going, you know you're a Christian, you know you're a child of God, but you're going through a difficult time. There's some uncertainty about the future. Because of the uncertainty, your mind is uh, consumed with, with concern and fear. Can I just say this? Rely on God. Put your trust. Commit your soul to trusting it, it, to commit your soul to him even in the most trying times listen i'm about to say god is faithful can i just encourage you right now I, i'm going to wrap this up here in just a minute okay but listen i'm about to say though okay i want to encourage you to do this text somebody those three words Th that's it just send somebody a text Send somebody an email, post it on Facebook, whatever you want to do, all right? Social media, just those three simple words. And you, you have no idea how profound that message can be to somebody, even in the midst of their suffering. They may be suffering, and, and they may get that text message from you that God is faithful. And that right there can help encourage them during their time of suffering. So uh, there's an old song. I, I remember, I always think about songs, okay? And there was a song, some songs that came to my mind. I'll put, put these links on the end here. We sing the old traditional hymn, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? I'm leaning on the everlasting arms. I thought about the song, I Know Whom I Have Believed In. And I'll try to find a link for that and put those at the end, I would encourage you to watch those and may God speak to you and encourage you and give you a peace in the midst of your suffering. Uh, I thought about this song, Through It All. See, here, here's a question you may be asking. You may be asking, how long will I have to suffer? Now, that's a good question. And you may not like the answer that I'm about to give you as long as it takes. I, I don't know how long the suffering may last in your life. But here's here's kind of the bottom line. It may take as long as it takes for God to purify you. You remember one of the reasons for the suffering is for God to purify us. In other words, he puts us into the fire. And, and as he turns up the heat, and, and as the flame gets hotter, the impurities rise to the top. And then the, the, the refiner will remove those impurities to do what? To purify us, to, to make us more, you know, to, to uh, bring a holiness about us into our life. And so, uh, and so here's what I'm saying, okay? Until we will remain in the suffering, how long will, will we remain in the fire? Uh, I would say it like this, when, when God sees his reflection, because that's what he's trying to do. And so what do we have to do? We have to, through it all, we have to remi uh, remind her, we, we have to rely on God, put our trust in him, commit your soul to him. There's another song, and, and I know there's this one, all right? It's called Through It All. Through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to to trust in God through it all. I've learned to depend upon his word. Can I just encourage you to rely upon God to commit your soul to him? I, I find it interesting. I'll have, I love how one commentary put it. Uh, verse 19, the very last part, he says, as to a faithful creator. Listen to how this one commentary put it. It is noteworthy that Peter uses the term faithful creator. The circumstances in which we find ourselves find their origin in the creation of this world. When we undergo physical pain, it is a comfort to know that God created our bodies. You understand that God created you? He did. And if you're having a hard time understanding 
understanding that, I would encourage you to go back and read Genesis 1, 2, and 3, and then read John 1, 2, and 3, the Gospel of John, and, and, and see how those connect together. But God created you. And so sometimes when there is suffering, physical suffering in our bodies, we need to be reminded that God is our faithful creator. He knows all about us. He knows all of our infirmities, all of our sickness, all of our illness. Uh, he knows everything about us. And then listen, he didn't just create our body, but he gave us a soul. And so that's why he says in verse 19, commit your soul to him, our faithful creator. Understand that you can go to God, your faithful creator. You can go to him in prayer at any moment, at any time. And you can just say, God, I, I've trusted in you. God, I'm relying upon you to come through and to help me during my time of suffering. I'm going to give you a verse. I'm not going to read it. Read Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, and see what it says about our faithful creator, our Savior, and our Redeemer. I'm going to read verse 19 one more time. But I'm going to, again, I read it earlier. But I'm going to read it from the easy English version. Listen to how it says, and then whatever translation you're reading, I want you to kind of compare the two and how they line up. Verse 19 in the easy English translation, so then people may cause you trouble and pain because God chooses that. But you should continue to believe God who made you. God always does what he has promised. So continue to believe that he will be good to you and continue to do what is good. May that be our prayer. Would you bow with me and let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we are committing the keeping of our souls to you. God, it's like we're making a deposit into heaven's bank. We're placing our souls in your hands. Father, I pray that those who are watching and those who are listening, Lord, that you will grant them peace. Lord, I, I pray, Lord, that you will surround them with your love and your presence. Father, I pray that if there's anyone who is going through a time of suffering, Lord, that they will be encouraged simply by these three words. God, you are faithful. God is faithful. God, you always come through for us. God, you are a promise-keeping God. Lord, we know that we can lean on the everlasting arms. Lord, we know in whom we have believed in. And Lord, we understand that through it all, you are faithful to keep your word. And so, Father, may we continue to believe in you. May we continue to trust you. And may we continue to do good, to seek out opportunities, to do those good works. Why? So you'll be glorified, even through the suffering and the hardships and the trials and the tribulation. God, may you be glorified and may your name be honored. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Again, thank you for tuning in. Trust and pray that God has spoke to you during this time. And I want to encourage you again, tune in this Sunday, May the 3rd, as we're in Psalm 119. And we're going to look at how the psalmist was facing affliction and how those verses and that message will line right up with what we've been talking about here in 1 Peter chapter 4. God bless you. Stay safe. Stay healthy.